Welcome to the seventh episode of Horse Spirit Arts Gallery's live Facebook series, The Artistic Spirit. Tonight, we're going to be interviewing and talking with artist Charlene Randolph, who is both a ceramic artist and a fused glass artist. But before we do that, I'd like to bring on Rob Hicks, who's a producer of this show, and he's going to tell you how it's going to work tonight. So, Rob, please join me. Hey, Robin, how are you? Good. So our, our pal uh, Candy Sakai is joined. Thank you, Candy, for uh, for hopping in. And Sam is here. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, this is an interactive show. We want you to participate. We want you to comment. Uh, this is, like I said, it's interactive. So we'll read your comments on air. And uh, if you have any questions for Charlene or for Robin during the show, put them in the chat and we'll answer them for you live. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> All right. Hey. Have a good show. Thank you. Okay, guys, so here we go. Um, so tonight we're going to um, speak with Charlene Randolph, as I said, and let me just tell you a few things about her that she probably wouldn't tell you herself. First of all, she's an award-winning artist. Her work is in collections across the United States. She's in galleries as well and specialty stores. She not only is a capable artist, but a very um, successful businesswoman she used to have a shop out at Savage Mill, and then she moved to Ellicott City for many years. Um, and now she is practicing in her own studio and doing all the creative things she's always wanted to do. She's also an instructor. She's taught at the Columbia Arts Center and the Senior Center in Howard County. So without further ado, let me introduce you to tonight's guest, Charlene Randolph. Hi, guys. Welcome to my studio. It's a pleasure to be here, Robin. Thank you for all you do. And let's see what we have for our audience tonight. Well, here we go. First off, people would like to know what inspires you. Why um, do you do the artwork that you do? Uh, well, for me, I've always known that I was an artist. There was never any question growing up what I would do. Um, but I always, I was drawing, I was painting, um, and I quit college right before my first pottery class. But when I would draw and paint, I pulled my inspiration from nature. I loved flowers. I loved plants. I loved light um, and how it played in the shadows on things. Uh, but what happened was I went back to college when I was about 35 to get my degree. And when I got on that potter's wheel, it was all over. And now <laughs> the inspiration comes from within. And um, when I sit and I do my Bible study in the morning and I talk to God, I journal. Nice. Very nice. So tell us about the art mediums that you have, because you're not just a ceramic artist, but you're a fused glass artist. So tell us about what you do. Well, for me, if you put it in extreme high heat, it seems like I must do it. <laughs> nice. I, I don't know why. I must like fire or something. <laughs> it's my earth sign. I don't know. Um, anyway, I, I love the way that clay feels on the wheel, but I also love hand building. And for me, this medium allows everything in me to come out freely. There's nothing that it has to look like 
other than what I'm sketching or what I have in my, my heart. And even when it doesn't come out like what I want, I'm still like, that's not bad. So, yeah. You know, it just, it, it has so much life in itself. I can go in any direction. I mean, clay is almost uh, too much sometimes because it can go in so many ways, but, but it's me, you know, from inside out. And, and it's like, all you have to do is look at my stuff and see how bendy and twisty everything is. And no, I'm one of those bohemian hippies. <laughs> you made me laugh. You know, one thing I forgot to say to people about you is that um, you've been in some beading magazines with your ceramic jewelry. You want to tell people about that? Well, um, you know, these, these magazines, I mean, anybody who's out there and wants to break into it, they're always calling for artists. So I had done some work before I had some custom cutters made and just kept submitting my work to people. It was kind of new at the time. The technique I was doing at the time uh, was a, a rubbing on metallic finishes with an all black background. And I, I did an underglaze that mimicked pastel paper so that when I rub it into the surface, it would adhere and stick. So I kind of had something that other people didn't where I'd have cutouts in the clay where the bead would be attached very intricately. So yeah, it was fun. I, I got to into more than one. Oh, that's great. Well, okay. So tell everybody about this fabulous art studio. Um, it sounds like the Taj Mahal. So I've heard about it for a while now and I think it's complete. So tell people about that. Where are you located actually? Okay, so I'm in Windsor Mill, which is just on the other side of the Patapsco River in Baltimore County. And as you know, uh, life kind of came to a head for a lot of us last July when the flood happened. And really, I felt God saying, it's a new season for you. And I can't tell you how freeing it's been because all these things were in my head to do, but you know, you've got to pay your artists, you've got to pay the bills and clean the floor and the toilet. So anyway, um, six months without a studio, but the woman who's been my banker said, we can get you going again. It's not the end of your world. And I was like, okay. So I, we, I kept looking at the barn like, shouldn't I be in the barn? Shouldn't I be in the barn? Come on, we got this real barn. It's not a Maryland shed barn. It's a three-story beautiful barn. And at first I was going to be downstairs and then I really felt like God was saying, come up higher. And when you see the pictures, I have like four nice windows and one's a huge picture window. Wow. I waited. I was like, dude, you got to finish. You got to finish. <laughs> and he gave me more. Wow. The everything from, you know, what God had planned and the, um, the construction person was wonderful. And when I sit here now, it's like, okay, it was worth waiting for. Oh, there you go. Well, are you ready to take a studio visit? Tell us what we're looking at. So you are looking at uh, my very active center work table. This is where I can lay out like yards of clay if I need it or all my, almost everything I have to glaze I can put on the table. And it really sits right in the center of the main room and I can face anywhere. I can face out in the window. I can face the store behind me. It's late at night when it's dark. Um, I can face either way and, and be centered in my space. Now, what are we looking at? Those are my workhorses or my girls, my babies. Um, I have my glass kiln that's, that's open on the left side. And I have my pottery kiln, which is closed on the right side. They're both pottery kilns, but I try to separate them for the most part so that I can keep it clean. Nice. Nice. You ready? We're going on a video field trip of Charlene's studio. Oh, there she is. Wow. Yep, it's, that's why we bought the place, really. See my picture window? Nice. Yep. There's some artists out there drooling. But you know what? It, it, I've been content in the back room basement. Yeah. I've been content in a garage. So really, um, it, it took a while. It's like my promised land, you know? 
That's wonderful. What are we looking at now? So you're watching me throw one of the coffee mugs that I recently made. And I'm sitting at my potter's wheel, which was to the right of the big table in the picture you saw. So this for me, I love this feel. Right now I'm opening up the centering that's going on. And I just enjoy the feel of this clay running through my fingers and, and everything about it. And I've actually gotten up from the wheel before and just sort of stumbled away because I sit there so long. Uh, and um, it's just such a joy when I do this to see, like you see how I'm lifting the bowl? Yes. Up, I'm sorry. To watch it change and transform from, you know, a bag of, of earth and into something functional, useful and enjoyable. So it's, it's all an addiction. It's an addiction. <laughs> you make me laugh. Straight up addiction. <laughs> now comes the shaping. That comes last. You don't want to start shaping it too soon because then you do what's called overthrowing it. And by the time everything is thin and, and ready and primed and ready, um, you, you can actually collapse it and ruin it. So there we go. Wow. It's me I, sometimes I fall asleep watching other people throw pottery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> oh, Nancy Lee Davis has joined us. She says you are very interesting. I know. Well, thank you, dear. <laughs> there you go. You gotta put character into a piece. It wow. took me a long time to master that swirl, by the way. Wow. It took me a bit of practice, so. Hi, Candy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everybody else who's out there. <laughs> you're, you're my um, my Facebook friend. Someday, maybe we'll see each other in person. So the, there we go. A friend of mine went to Taiwan and got me this really nice stamp for when I put my pieces on. Also, oh, Candy, who is far away, she's in Asia somewhere. Hong Kong, is that right? Oh, she's in Tokyo. She says, very nice and pottery is fun. Thank you, it is, um, it's, it's an addiction. Wow, look at the detail on that. So this is the direction I wanna go in. This is the maker's mark. There you go, my name goes on it very nicely. Um, and it's that's that to me is, it's done. It's at the place of perfection in my mind where I've accomplished what I set out to do when I put that on there. Now this is me unloading the glaze kiln in my sexy apron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling out a few glaze pieces. The, the kiln and the glaze fire goes up to about 2,230 degrees and I, I have to let it cool down impatiently to, to below 200 before I start pulling stuff out. Wow. And oh, that's, here's your dog. I know, Lucy. That's either Christmas or it's crying. <laughs> so. Most of, I'm getting better. Uh, after 22 years, it's mostly Christmas. This is a fused glass piece. And this, um, where I'm at right now is I love that the kiln is deciding where things go. I, I cut it. <laughs> Beverly, I love you. You can come to my studio. I, Beverly I, said that she has severe envy over your studio. You know, but honey, I've been at the kitchen table too. So... <gasps> and I share it. You make me laugh. Well, that is a fabulous studio. Fabulous. You know, Charlene, one of the things I love about your work are the glazes. And as you know, I'm particularly um, partial to your blue green base, but you know, you have some beautiful ones. Can you tell us how you get that? So when, when you start, and I, I do all commercial, I don't really want to bother mixing my own glazes. It's more for me in the making and then um, finishing it properly to make the clay and the glaze work together to highlight each other in the best way possible. So the glazes that I use are Amico, they're all commercial. They're designed to give you in a single glaze, like if I, if I show you just the top of this piece, you see the inside wow. drip color, another color, and then like a flat color, it'll pull. So when I make my work, I design it to do what it's made to do. And 
it just sort of takes on a life of its own. The bigger issue is trying to, you know, not be bored and match in things that I like to go with it. But if you learn your tools, if you learn the discipline and you know what you have, the joy is and the trick is make them do what they're designed to do so they're free to be what they're designed to be. That's awesome. All right. So we've talked um, now more about your pottery than your fused glass. Now, I have seen you put together some amazing things. Can you talk about what goes through your mind as you're starting out with a fused glass piece? Um, so the fused glass it has really been a transition and I'm, I'm still new and where I want to go with it. Oh, look There's how pretty that is. The, for me, um, the pottery is the job the glass is the fun. So it's like recreation. I don't ever not do art. I just want you people to know that I eat, sleep and drink art. So this to me is more about patterns and combinations of colors that really spark good, okay? And so I just play around them like a puzzle. I was a puzzle doer from forever. So when you see those sheets over there, that's, I'm getting ready to slice them. So I'm experimenting with this thing where they all get sliced the same height because they're all about the same thickness, lined up in such a way where they're stacked side to side to side to side. And I let the kiln do its thing on them and bring out the pattern in the firing. So uh, I don't know where that, that piece is that goes with that. But they, I, I cut them in ways so they... They, they do that. See how it's wide and then narrow and then wide and then narrow. So when I cut the strip flat on one side and wavy on the top side, they have different heights in the firing. So they fill different volumes in the, in the fuse glass. And you can take it to a full fuse, which that is, or you can take it to what's called a dimensional. And you have like in the gray piece you saw where it was more textural. And that's what I love. So the, the flat is good for functional. The textual is great for walls. Nice. Hey, Rob, you had a photo up um, not too long ago that had her pieces um, mounted. Charlene, what is that mounted on? So I love mixed media. And I have been daydreaming for months about how to put this glass onto something else. Those are our floor tiles from Lowe's and Home Depot. They're what? They're floor tiles. Oh my God, they look beautiful. They're just floor tiles. And so what I like about this is the industrial look and the contrast. So if you saw those floor tiles, they're a satin finish now like, and they look like linen and, and then other things. So I like the contrast of the hard, shiny glass and then this, this matte background and it's pristine. And, you know, I have, I share my artwork with a lot of people like, like Brief, um, who was at the store I used to have. I ask her opinion all the time. And then um, when my son likes it, it's good. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Your, your son is your final approver. My son is my final approval. Okay, so I have to ask you one more thing about fused glasses. In the gallery, you have some pieces that are like crisscrossed. You know, you have pieces going one way and the other, and then uh, they're in black and brown and gray, and then all of a sudden purple emerges. How did you do that? That's just the glass. So the companies make these great pieces of glass. They're called streakies, and they do this big flowing pattern. And what I did with that, so the pattern goes this way, right? I cut it this way and then just reverse and flip and reverse and flip. So it almost looks like bamboo. Wow. Or, you know, it makes a totally different pattern and then just edge it with the purple glass. That's awesome. Hey, Rob has got some comments. Tell us about it, Rob. All right. So I'll, we're, we're kind of, we had a uh, kind of cash out. So um, Sandy Kai, Sakai says color contrast is amazing. Um, <laughs> Hey, Nancy let us Lee see you. Well, well, let me, I'll just read them so that you guys can comment over them. <laughs> uh, Nancy Lee Davis says, you make it look so easy, and I know it is not. There we Beverly, go. I agree with Nancy. Yep. Beverly Hunter says, awesome. Uh, Lori, Lori Hansen says, love those pots. Great studio. 
Candy Sakai said, wow, that is so nice. And so Beverly actually has a question. Uh, and Carlos just joined us. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. So, so Beverly says, do you ever fire any glass in a ceramic piece? I have before in the past. And I will tell you that I will experiment with it again. I love, so I, when I tell you it's an addiction, I mean it. I collect other people's work and, and I have my own and I love making it. I just love everything about it. So I will experiment again with putting glass in the bottom of some, some pottery, which is very lovely, very lovely. Wow, that's awesome. I do, I would like to, if I have a second to comment, um, people don't understand. I think a lot of times people look at pottery as, is sometimes not on the, the same level as fine art. But let me tell you what, if you knew the difficulty from start to finish of having a piece come out perfect, you would understand that it's actually a bigger deal when a pot comes out right. And we as potters have a secret phrase that we don't get attached until we take it home. <laughs> so many things can go wrong and and this particular piece i have here i'll let you on a little secret um which is okay with me but see right but that's okay because this is a self-portrait in clay and we're all cracked pots so it's all right oh there you go it's okay there you go well, I'll tell you, in terms of artists collecting other work, I have a piece of work of just about every single artist in this gallery. Now, yes, I picked the artists that came in the gallery, but you guys are amazing. And as you know, Charlene, I was buying your, your pottery long before you joined oh, the gallery. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, have, we have a history here. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Yeah. So listen, um, if you were going to say something to a brand new artist who wants to get into pottery, what would you say? Well, you know what? I would, I would tell anybody that I firmly believe that we've all been given a creative spirit. I think when we don't feed that, whether it's through life's, you know, people, words, wounds, whatever, uh, fear, and we don't go there, not only do we rob ourself of a cathartic blessing of, of healing of inspiration but we rob the world because you never know when somebody walks into a gallery like yours or an art studio and they'll see that one piece that will just move them from yeah. here to there we are we are stopping up the world right spiritually and emotionally and you know clay is a lot of discipline i sat in a cold dark basement for four or five hours at a time every day after work and so is anything we're going to be good at you have to put the time in don't worry about your style at first learn the discipline and what you're doing hang in there keep going and let it develop itself that's wonderful. Now, one thing I know about you, oh, wait, somebody Ken to you is now online and they said, so, so proud of you, Ann Char, and he has something that you made him when he was three years old. And he oh says, you gosh. don't show it, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Now, somebody wants to know if you were ever associated with the clay ground. Yes. <laughs> like you are the owner of the clay ground. I was, I was, um, they, they are still there and they are still doing classes. So have at it. They're a wonderful place. I'm, I'm, I'm just not there. It's there, but I'm not. Right. The flood made lots of changes happen. It did, you know, and it made me realize that, uh, I was spending a lot more time running and managing than being true to my art. Yeah, I can understand that. I really can. All right, Char, what else would you like people to know? Um, you know, you, uh, again, just go for it. I don't care what your talent is. You could be a baker. You could uh, be a woodworker. You could be a quilter. You could be whatever. Find some passion in your life so that there's, there's this thing dynamic going on inside that brings joy and life to you and everybody around you. And it doesn't matter if you're professional or not. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it ever sees anyone else's um, 
light of day because some of the most beautiful things ever made have yet to be seen. They might be in somebody's drawer. They yeah. might be in somebody's attic. It's what the whole process does for you. And, and it, that's really more important because we're created to do this. So let's do it. I just love that. That is so awesome. You are absolutely inspiring. Now, Rob, will you please bring yourself on the screen and let's hear some comments from our viewers. <laughs> So I, I wasn't planning to be on screen. I was just going to read over them, but uh, I wanted to catch up. <laughs> so yeah. Carlos says, wow, I just like to sit here and look at these lovely ladies. So see, that's why <laughs> I should not be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beverly Hunter says, yay, I love that combo. Uh, Candy says, pottery is one of a kind art that express yourself through your work. Um, you had already, Robin, mentioned, uh, see, Charlene, you said Jordan, but on the Facebook, it says LJ. L oh, LJ, yeah. So proud of you, Aunt Char. Uh, Ronald Beck says, are you associated with Clayground? So you got that. Yeah, and um, Kimberly Clark says, more wonderful art exploding from this Horse Spirits art gallery. Love it's this. Gallery. It really yeah. is. I mean, it's, it's because of the awesome artist. It is, but you know what? You, see, most people don't know that you do your own art, too. And... Mm -hmm. um, I, what's great about you is you love light and color and it, that's your medium when you do the crystals is like so wonderful because <laughs> it uses that. But your art is also in how you put that mix together in your gallery. Yeah. And I know you take time to do that. Yeah. And as an <laughs> owner, it takes time to do that. And it's just a beautiful place to be. So. Oh, thank you, Char. I'm so I'm so honored to have you as part of the gallery. And I do spend a lot of time putting the gallery together. And in my previous career, when meetings were boring, I used to sit and draw what the gallery was going to look like. So when, <laughs> my, that's my husband laughing in the background. We worked at the same place. And, um, you know, being able to bring artists in and put it all together, it really matters to me. And I love doing it. I really do. Well, you have to beat us. <laughs> All right, Charlene, is there anything else? Um, just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit of my story. Um, thank you for being able to, you know, have all of us crazy artists around here <laughs> support us in our addictive habits. <laughs> and, you know, just thank you for persevering because it would have been very easy to I mean, you were just got your feet into that store. Yeah. What happened? I mean, you you just <laughs> I know. got it all together, and here you are getting it together again. So, yeah. you know, good job, Robin. Oh, thank you, Char. I love Ellicott City. Yeah, Ellicott City is the best. Now, Rob Hicks, will you come back online with me, please? Yep. Hold on. Oh. He's coming. I'm. Oh, there's my friend Jed. There we go. I don't see you. I know. Hold on. There we go. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I didn't, so I'll I didn't know you were going to bring I, me back on screen. Yeah, I know. I just have to give you a little, um, I just have to tell you about Rob. So oh. <laughs> none of this would be possible without him. And he is the creative spirit behind this series. And um, he goes to the artist studios and videotapes them and we're getting ready. To, and by the way, he's one of the co-owners of Enlightened Audiovisual. And he does these little segments for companies that you're getting ready to see. Um, so he's really talented. And right now we're going to introduce, as we do every week at the end of the show, another one of the businesses in Ellicott City. This is Linda Jones and she owns Tea on the Tiber and her, her store was destroyed, just like many of our stores were destroyed during the flood. But that girl is back up and running in her story. It's even prettier than it was before. So Rob, can you show us Linda? Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Linda Jones and I'm the owner of Tea on the Tiber. We are a Victorian tea room located in downtown historic Ellicott City. We serve afternoon tea, mostly by reservation. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On Thursday and Friday, you can come for tea between 11 and 5 without a reservation. 
or uh, anytime you would like. On Saturdays and Sundays, we do tea twice a day, noon and three. We would love to have you call for a reservation, 410-480-8000, and come for tea. So there so it is. It it's really an incredible business. It brings a lot of people to Ellicott City. And you know what? More and more businesses are opening all the time down here. So I hope you guys will come and see us. I want, to say one, I want to say one thing, Robin, that, that I was actually embarrassed about in, in doing the Tea on the Tiber uh, video business card. You know, I've, I've lived in Ellicott City for 17 years, actually longer than that. And I've walked by Tea on the Tiber hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and never bothered... I feel embarrassed that, that to say this, but it's but it's the truth. So, but I never even bothered to open the door to figure out what was in it. And I've had at least seven people DM me since they saw the video, and they're like, "Oh my God, I never knew that." And I think that was one of the the cool things with that you've kind of helped me with on these video business cards is is that it's like it gives people that glimpse to say, "Ah, I never thought about that." Like. For sure, I'll, I'll definitely go to Tea on the Tiber now, but I kick myself for not bothering to open the door 17 years ago, or actually 13 years ago when my daughter was born, because this would have been like the perfect place to have, you know, father-daughter tea, because oh, yeah. on the top level, they've got like a princess room. So Yeah. Um, well, that's, and, and the, that's great that you know now. <clears throat> it's great that I know now. And, you know, the second thing I want to thank you for and is, number one, allowing me to do the show. Uh, yesterday, as I was telling you when we were in the green room, that uh, Becky Mangus reached out to me yesterday to have her, to have me cut a TV commercial for HC Drug Free. So I met with Joan today, uh, or right before this show, and we cut the commercial, and you should see it on the HC Drug Free uh, page as well as Comcast in the next three or four days. So oh, thank you guys awesome. for uh, for also giving you know helping me. You're doing great. Well, the, the last thing I just want to tell you what's going to happen next week. So it'll be our eighth artist out of 47 artists in the gallery. This is Sarah Pick, and she is exclusively a fused glass artist. And she loves color. And her favorite colors are the blue, green, lavender, purples. And her work is interesting, unique, and amazing. So I can't wait for you to meet her. Um, so... Again, Ellicott City has been a blessing. We really are coming out of the flood. Come see us. And I really look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, with Sarah Pick, Fuse Glass Artist. Y'all have a wonderful evening.